Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I uh, just saw a new channel member. Thanks, Overcomer. I think you changed your, your name. You actually had a different name before because I've seen you around frequently on the channel, so I appreciate that. And uh, shout-outs to everyone else who supports the channel. You know, everything is really starting to heat up with the world agenda, isn't it? Um, and it always does. As Apollo approaches the summer solstice. Now we knew some of these things were going to happen. Because this is the norm. As they get into their moon cycles. And their sun cycles. And this is the world that we live in now. Because it's always been about the sun and the moon. Hasn't it? Apollo and Artemis. Welcome to the Matrix. Where synchronicities abound in the realm of the knowledge of good and evil. And the physical meets the spiritual, which meets circumstance. I also want to thank the subscriber Sean for noticing how the, man the matrix manifests right before our eyes. We'll be talking a lot about Apollo today. And as we have for the last several years. And... The first thing I want to start out today with is this press conference of the scrooting that just happened in Buffalo. Now, make no mistake, what you're looking at on your screen is and was intentional. Because as I said, we are approaching the summer solstice. And it's always been about Apollo. The Apollo tile quilt. Now, what's this about? Well, let's break this down. And we're not going to talk too much about the actual scrooting. There's a lot of people that cover these. And that's great. We've kind of moved off of that. Um, just because of the nature of the sensitivity of it all. You really can't talk about this on YouTube anymore. Unless you parrot the official story. So, we're not going to touch that today. What we are going to touch is the spiritual aspects of what happened. Now, we've always realized that tiles represent the scales of the serpent. And oftentimes, we were seeing the blue tiles, weren't we? Blue tiles represented in films, in swimming pools, in underground catacombs beneath Washington, D.C. This is where they do sacrifice. They are the scales of the dragon, the scales of the serpent. In this case, these are golden tiles. So this Apollo tile quilt has spiritual significance and the place that was chosen. Now, of course, Buffalo has significance as well. How so? Well, we just did a decode on a new series that just came out a couple weeks ago called Outer Range. And it was all about buffaloes being pierced twice with arrows. Arrows representing the smack scene. So all of this, these things that happened are driving us down a path. A path that will take us to a society where there will be no dissent. There will only be consent. Now, what is going on with this? Well, of course, this is this whole thing. Now, this governor, she was under the microscope over the last year because someone was plotting to, like, kidnap her and all this drama. All of that was brought to, the, to our attention to put the focus on this governor and what was going to happen. And then they went into this tile laden room decked out in Apollo basically what you're looking at is Thump's penthouse on a spiritual level the gold everywhere Apollo everywhere they want you to know that this is who they worship now I wish this wasn't the case but there are too many signs and, sing and sim symbols that have abounded the buffalo in outer range the Apollo Artemis program. All of this stuff is spiritual sorcery. Now, here's where things get weird. 
because Apollo actually was the bringer of disease and the bringer of the cure of that disease. And he actually requires a sacrifice for that. In this case, a hecatome is what it's called. And what a hecatome is, is 100 cattle. Isn't it weird that 10 people died? 10 and 100 magnitudes of one another. So, those are the spiritual manifestations of what just happened over the weekend. If you don't know what happened, go check it out. There's plenty of channels covering it. But today's headline show, we will get into the odd cult of Apollo and his lover. Are you ready for this? Coronis. Bringer of disease and bringer of the cure. Then, later in the show, we're going to get into the controlled demolition of the middle class in America. And the strengthening of government compliant corporations. Then we'll get into Native American boarding school death disclosure. And the cover up that is happening right now. Yes, they have found graves. They are now admitting that the graves are there. But they're not saying what that's about. So therefore, there's the cover up. And then next we're going to cover, and this one was new to me, the massive ICE surveillance state on the border. And it's not just about immigrants, you guys. It covers everything. This is why I was so upset when Thump was getting behind this national ID, the real ID, and endorsing it, that the states do it. Because this is all about you losing your privacy. You being sucked into the federal versus the state. At least with the state, you have a fighting chance. You're closer to the leadership. Enough people get angry and you're going to get a different governor. Even though I believe their elections are fixed too. But at least you're closer to the problem. The more things that go federalized, that's when you lose complete control. That's, that's when it gets wrapped up into the world agenda. And then at the end of the show, we're going to look at a vintage, some vintage images that describe how people really felt about smack scenes back in the when they first were discovered and created and all of that. And I want to thank subscribers who sent information in for everything pretty much we're going to cover today. I want to make sure we're hooked up here and then we're going to get into some of this stuff. Welcome, everybody. Now, this is probably the central theme of this channel. In terms of major discoveries about who is behind all of this. Okay. Now we know the devil is. But the devil is legion. He's many. And he likes to use this particular identity. Apollo. And everything surrounding it. Why? Because it's the false sun. Right? It's the sun of the sky instead of the sun of God. So he likes to confuse and confound people. And get them believing in his son rather than the son of God. And this is what he does. He hijacks the most high he tries to. A lot of people are deceived by this, you guys. A lot of people worship the sun. Or they doubt that Christ is real because they think it was based off of some kind of sun cult. That's not the case. It was the other way around. So, this is Coronis. If you can believe that. Apollo's lover. Now, why is this weird? Well, of course, Corona sounds like another word that we all just had to deal with for the past three years. But it's also weird because several years ago, we realized that what was behind this whole thing was an Apollo cult. We were already talking about Apollo, weren't we? For many, many years before Vidco came out onto the world stage. We found that Apollo was buried deep in the recesses of the American occult power structure. We read that Apollo brings disease and cures it, and that in return he requires the hecatome sacrifice 100 cattle. Well, guess how many people that they're claiming that died from Vidco? 
Uh, one million. So again, we have a power of ten. We have ten people in Buffalo. We have a million that supposedly died from Vidco. And I'm wondering if this is the hundred cattle sacrifice. Now let's read in here about Corona and see if there's any more clues about this that can, you know, button this down. Now, first of all, Corona sounds like Cronus, doesn't it? And it's supposed to, because that's the devil. We talked about Kronos, didn't we? In the TV series Outer Range, it was all about Kronos in time. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I was reading through this, I mean, it they just give it away. So, Cronus is the daughter of Phlegius. And of course, this is the word that phlegm comes from. Spelled almost the exact same way. Do you see the joke here? This whole cold thing and flus and viruses, it all comes from the sun, worshippers. Somehow, I don't know exactly how it works, but this is where the roots of this are. All the way back here in ancient Greece. Now, it's sure starting to sound like corona-shaped virus that causes sickness and death has been around for a very long time, hasn't it? Now let's keep reading here. And of course, Coronas then becomes the mother of Asclepius. Now as far as I know, I believe Asclepius is like the, is like the Caduceus. Isn't it? I don't know that, but that's weird, right? Now understand that Asclepius, according to this, is the god of all medicine. In case you think I'm stretching this around to fit some kind of agenda, no. This is Asclepius, the god of medicine. As you can see right here. So, there's something to this, isn't there? Now, the article goes on to describe a Caesarean section Yes, this procedure goes all the way back to ancient Greece. And I can imagine there were much different reasons than saving a child that they were doing this kind of emergency delivery. Can anyone say a sacrifice? Now, let's keep reading because Artemis, Apollo's twin sister, kills Coronis because she cheated on Apollo. How did she kill her with arrows? Let me go down to that part so you guys can see the visual on this. Apollo, however, came to know of this affair through the prophetic powers. Angered, he sent his twin sister Artemis to kill Coronis. Accordingly, Artemis killed Coronis and her family with arrows. Now... We've come to understand on this channel that the arrows are a metaphor for smack scenes. And this is why there were two arrows in the buffalo in outer range. Those were the two doses. So, Corona killed with smack scenes. It's all right here. History repeating itself. Nothing new under the sun. Now, it doesn't stop there. Because... Ovid, which sounds like the word that rhymes with it, wrote the poem about all of this, about Coronis. Now, if this all sounds familiar to you you're, and you've heard this before, it's because you have. We've covered this in previous videos, but as time has gone on, many of you have contributed more connections to what this is all about. In the beginning, I think we just barely, like, you know, went over it and we saw some of the connections and then all of you, like, contributed more and added to the connections. And I wanted to do a wrap-up show so that you could understand that this is very real. So, now, there's even more because there's another character in this whole story called... Hygiene. 
or hygienus, which of course is from the word hygiene. You have Hermes, which sounds like herpes. I mean, this stuff just, you can't make this up. There's even a character named Clinus, which of course is where the word clinic came from. Wow. So Apollo's arrows are the smack scene. So now that we, the, there's other things that we know as well. That hypo needles are umbrellas. Remember that discovery? It was confirmed over and over again, wasn't it? That these hypo needles are basically umbrellas. Now I'm going to show you this. I don't know what's wrong with my computer, why this isn't pulling up. Let's refresh this page here. There it goes. Now, I'm not going to play much of this. I'm sure it's like copyright or whatever. But I wanted to show you this because someone sent this to me. And this is, of course, Macron or Macron. I don't know how you spell him, his name. I call him Bacon. And I don't know if this was right before or after the election the travesty that they call voting and electing people. But people are upset at him. And they start throwing tomatoes at him. So, how do, how do the bodyguards save Macron from the t tomatoes? They pull out an umbrella. Let's play part of this. They open this umbrella. They just happen to be standing around with umbrellas on a completely sunny day. Now you can say that it's to shield him from the sun. More confirmation of the Apollo cult. But look at this. Talk about synchronicity. And thanks to the subscriber who sent this to me. He's in a market here and pelted with tomatoes because people don't like him. He's one of the most... Remember they cracked down in France? It was so dark during the spam endemic they were cracking down forcing people to stay shutter their homes stay inside it was like probably in a scale of one to ten i think australia was number one in terms of tyranny and then a close second was france then third was probably like austria and that's the, that's the order of tyranny that came down during the spam endemic and so people don't like him they had the passports and mandatory passports they weren't allowed to do many many things in their daily life and it was like they were trying to be the poster child for how they can beat down their citizens and people did not forget that and that was on the heels of the yellow vest movement which people were already upset about so how this guy won well you're gonna have to decide for yourself how people like this win elections i can tell you what i feel well, now we live in a day and age where you can't even doubt electoral results now. That's called misinfo. Unbelievable. Let me check in with you guys. Keep going with this. Welcome, everybody, on this Monday morning. So we get between some of these headlines. All right. So let's keep going because, look, at they've got the... Now, we'd even talked about these different types of umbrellas in this market. This is all Apollo coming into the summer and this is what this is really about now let's get into some of these other headlines what else do we have here now you guys have heard many many times before about the middle class becoming extinct we've all felt it some of us are middle class and you know all of a sudden our fixed costs that we thought were fixed aren't so fixed anymore, are they? All the things that we do in life to survive, the costs go up. Some of them doubled in like a year for some essential things that you do in your life. Rents, energy bills, gasoline, groceries. Things that disproportionately affect middle class people versus rich people. It's a percentage of your life and your spending, right? It's pretty simple, okay? A rich person spends 0.001% of their, of their life or their budget on the things that I just mentioned. And poor people spend like 25% to 50% of their budget on the things that I just mentioned. 
gas. Food and other things, car payment, all these things. So, what's fair about that? It's not fair at all, is it? There should be some equalizing factor on, you know, your just daily costs of what it costs to do things. I don't know how, to, how they would do that, but, you know, the rich people don't worry about the same things that we worry about. Here we are in America and people still have to worry about keeping warm in the winter, afraid to turn a thermostat up in fear of having five, seven hundred, a thousand dollar gas bills. And yes, that is happening in the Northeast as we speak because I live here. Gas bills approaching seven hundred dollars. That's highway robbery. That should not be happening in America. I don't know what they want to do about that. But something needs to be done. And it doesn't need to come out of people like our pocket because we've already paid, already paying. The proportion and the percentage of our budget is much higher to survive than it is for rich people. Now you can call that rich shaming. You can call it whatever you want, but it's the truth. And if they, you know, they're so rich that they can do whatever they want. And, you know, here we are. Then something needs to change. Something needs to change. Now, all these presidents promise this. Of course, on the right, they say, hey, if we give more money to the corporations, they're going to make more jobs that are higher paying. Well, we've already tried that, haven't we? We've had three solid Republican presidents, haven't we? We had Bushes one and two. We had Thing one and Thing two. Then we had Thump they're supposed to outdo them all. And what ha ones it ends up happening? They act more like Democrats, don't they? And what else happens? They say all these things are going to do, and then you look around and nothing's changed. When I go to Walmart, I still see all Chinese products. Why is that? Wait a minute, we were supposed to sock it to the Chinese, weren't we? According to Thump, we were making progress. We were, we were going to, America was going to be great. We we're going to build all these factories. And then the people are like, oh, well, that's because he needed to get reelected. He would have done it on a second term. That's called the rope-a-dope. There was never any intention of making things equal with China. They're still gaining power, great economy. We're still getting hosed. Still all Chinese products in Walmart. I mean, I don't know. Am I wrong here, you guys? I don't know. But it does sadden me when every once in a while I'll get a person that'll stray onto the channel in the comment section. Like, what's your problem with Thump? Or, what did he do wrong? He did this, 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 and this. I'm like, all those things you just listed have absolutely no effect on your life right now. The biggest thing in your life that you're being affected by is all started when the economy got shut down and stimulus checks started going out. That's when all of this started. Could have been handled completely differently. And guess what? I bet you it wouldn't have been any worse for this quote-unquote spam-demic. But see, we can never prove that now because it wasn't handled that way. We can look at other countries and see how they handled it. How they have 0.5% of their population smack the nated. And still just manage to have lower percentage of quote unquote deaths than we did, and many other countries who had 50 and 60 and 70 percent smack the nated. Just look at Africa, it tells the story. Now, people can say what they want oh, well, it's because you know, the borders and stuff. And no, we were told this thing is hyper contagious, so that that falls flat they have no excuse they have no um they have no explanation for how that happened in africa how they dodged this huge threat there is no epidemiological explanation so what do they say oh they say it's just under report we're not getting the true reports because of their reporting so in other words they're basically saying they're too stupid to report correctly 
These are Democrats saying this. Just like they always like to say, oh, people of color are too stupid to get a driver's license or too stupid to register. This is this is the message that they actually send when they say things like, oh, you shouldn't have to have a driver's license to vote. Do you see the problem here? Do you see that all these people at the top, not saying you and me, they all don't like us. They're all racist at the top. Democrat and Republican. They've proven it time and time again. And Bo Jivin with his recent commentary on what happened in Buffalo. I mean, you can see it right beneath the surface of the words that they say. That they despise us. And we keep, we're the dumb ones that keep thinking that they're looking out for us. Anyway, we got on a little soapbox there, but, you know, sometimes you got to do that to help wake people up. But this stuff just burns me out because I've, I'm one of those people that has worked very hard in my life and I've been, I've made a little bit of money in my past when I was in a career and the more you make, the more they take. doesn't matter if you have a write-off, nothing is for sure. You're constantly getting laid off. You're constantly getting moved around. You're constantly getting screwed with in your life. And then all it takes is one divorce or one illness and you lose it all. Now, I know that there's a lot of people that have really good experience with life. There's a few that stray onto the channel and they're like, Casey, you know, I've had a great experience owning a home and I've, I've had a great experience and great, you know, that is not the norm. That's the exception. There are many, many, many more stories of people losing it all because someone got sick, the breadwinner got sick or they got laid off. Or they had to sell their house when they were underwater. And it goes on and on and on. The American dream. Now I'll take it a step further because I believe that this attack on the middle class is a controlled demolition. And it started a very, very long time ago. Through several presidencies, both Democrat and Republican And the surge that happened, believe it or not, happened under Thump when he allowed the entire middle class economy to be shut down and empowered the essential corporate interests. And unfortunately, because so many people are still paralyzed by the right left paradigm, they failed to see what was happening right before their eyes. And I heard every excuse in the book. Oh, he has to do this to, this is his compromise so that, you know, so he can kind of stay in the, in the middle a little bit so he can get reelected. Well, how did that work out? How did the shuttering of middle class America work out? We still haven't recovered. We thought a few thousand dollars in stimulus checks would make it all better. The spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down? Let's read about what they're saying about the middle class in America in this Market Watch article. I'm going to check with you guys, make sure you guys are here with me. Now, let's read this article and see what's going on here. Anybody that's middle class and below, we're screwed. Housing costs rise at the fastest pace in decades. Some Americans are already feeling the brunt. Now, why are housing costs going up? Well, the people that are landlords will tell you that it's because their taxes have gone up. So, let me ask you this. Shouldn't there be some kind of control on the taxes that make so that the landlords don't have to raise their rents? I would think you would think that that would be happening so that we can help the economy get back on track, right? Because if people are spending all their money in housing costs, then guess what? They're not spending their money in other areas. Let's see if this pulls up here. Housing costs jumped 5% in the past year. It's way more than that in pocket areas. Where I'm seeing it the most is basically where, um, where you're near a big city, a metropolis, and this whole work from home thing took off. And so these people left the cities, and this is this is what burns me up. I'm sorry, you guys, but you you need to hear this. These people that left these cities, they're like the what's the word I'm looking for? 
they're not real truthers, okay? The ones that waited till the last minute and they saw an opportunity to work from home and go move to the rural community so they can save half their rent and they got out at the last minute after they followed all the rules and did everything they were supposed to do. That's not the real deal. Those people are the problem. They're the ones that drove up all these costs. They're not like the people like you and I who have been thinking about and planning this for years and years and years and going, you know what? The writing's on the wall. Some of you are already in rural communities and you've seen your rents go up because of these people. You guys, I've seen it all around me. The town I live in here in the Northeast. Like 10 apartment buildings went up in a town of... This town was tiny before when I first got here. 10 apartment buildings, parking, bars, restaurants. Literally in the last two years. And guess what? It was all being built during the spam demic. As people were moving out of New York and coming here. So that they can enjoy rents that were half of what they were paying in New York. Now, these are people from New York that swore up and down. Oh, I'm going to stay here. Oh, there's nothing wrong with New York. Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm going to ignore all of your, your advice about, about leaving. I'm just going to stay here in New York. It's great. I'm going to stay here. And then all of a sudden, they couldn't go to a concert. They couldn't go to a bar. They couldn't go to a park. So what do they do? They split and drive up everyone else's rents around them. Does that sound fair to you? Therefore, driving up the property taxes and the landlords have to charge more rent to get to cover their property taxes. Energy costs go up. So if a landlord's offering, you know, uh, free util or utilities included in the rent, he's got to cover that. Basically, a bunch of people have been priced out of the market in their area and are being forced to move. They already did their homework. They already moved to the rural areas. And now, all of a sudden, here comes all the work from home, yuppies, coming into town, driving up everyone's rent and property taxes. This is America, you guys. Nowhere is safe. Now. Okay, I'll calm down a little bit. But you guys need to hear this. This is because this is the truth. And no one's really talking about this stuff. On this level. You know, we got to get into the nitty gritty of what causes these problems? What causes unfairness and imbalance? How can it be fixed? You know, people always ask me, well, you know, if we're talking about solutions, we're talking about solutions right now. These are the solutions to these problems is identifying the problem first, which people fail to realize and talk about. And then you have to figure out how you're going to demand that things change. Now, I've heard a lot of good talk about these uh, freedom cells. Now, I don't know. I haven't dug too much into this. So, you know, if this is some kind of psyop, you know, just let me know in the chat. But I've heard from several people that they're developing their own freedom cells. And they're accessing this through Facebook. Or not Facebook. I'm sorry. Telegram. And people are getting together in groups and hanging out together, uh, doing projects together. Uh, trading with one another it's like all the things that would be a great solution to combating you know having to be in the matrix and shop at walmart and pay rent and all those things people are getting land together some of them others are just buying cheap land and building their own place or parking their travel trailer there so these things are available to you on telegram now I don't trust anybody in terms of the social media stuff. So I'm always skeptical. And I always wonder if you put your name next to a group that there might be some provocateur in these groups that could try to derail the whole thing. And now you're on some kind of list. So just be careful and do your diligence. Maybe come in under an anonymous name and make sure you talk to these people first. Before you go full on. Maybe you, you want to shield your identity for a while. Just be careful is what I'm saying. But this is something that, you know, I might try. Get in with a group in my local area. So, what else are they saying here about the middle class? I don't know how we got on that other subject, but... It says here, Damon Blanchard, a 46-year-old living in Columbus, Ohio, is unemployed. But gets a bi-weekly bi -weekly workers' comp check worth $686 for 
after getting hurt on the job in a scrapyard three years ago. Last year, an investment firm purchased the apartment complex Blanchard is living in, which he says largely home to people of color, and ultimately bumped his rent up from four fifty a month to nine seventy. It doubled. It doubled. Now I'm curious to hear your stories about how your rent has gone up, and how you know, and if you think that's fair. Look, I know the landlords need to get paid, but that doesn't solve the problem. The problem is still is that our economy is messed up and something needs to be fixed and the leadership isn't even talking about it as if there's a problem okay and again it started under a republican president we're just seeing the fruit of all of that right now and it's the policies are continuing to erode away at the middle class like many tenants have done since the start of the spam pandemic, Blanchard tried to organize with his neighbors and fight back against the landlord's rent increases. Well, good luck with that. Though he said the investment firm that acquired his complex, Vision and Beyond, was unwilling to negotiate with the renters as a group. The company did not immediately respond to market watch requests for comment, but has previously told local media outlets that it is investing in a much-needed safety and building improvements. Yeah, they'll always have an excuse, right? Things are changing, but they're getting worse for citizens of the nation. Now, and then they go on. This is a long article. I'm not going to read this whole thing. But you get the gist of it. You get the gist of it. So, weird times we're living in, you guys. We've got homeless middle class people now. It's crazy. Now, what else do we have here? Now, let's get into this next story here. We all know that American institutions in recent history have oppressed its own citizens. We've covered some of those stories of how our own government has sanctioned the death of its own citizens in one form or another. Not just in the womb, but living, walking, breathing people. And throughout our history, it's really never stopped. It's just gone underground. And since they can't hide from it anymore, they simply whitewash it. As in this case, with the Native American schools and the mass graves that have recently been discovered. Let's read this and see how they try to minimize this and frame the story to basically generate its own doubt and deny responsibility. It says here, at least 500 Native American, Alaska Native American Hawaiian children died while attending Indian boarding schools run or supported by the U.S. government, a highly anticipated Interior Department report said Wednesday. The report identified 400 schools and more than 50 grave sites and said more grave sites were likely to be found. The report is the first time in U.S. history that the government has attempted to comprehensively research and acknowledge the magnitude of the horrors it inflicted on the Native American children for decades. But, it falls well short of some independent estimates of deaths and does not address how the children died or who is responsible. Pretty convenient, huh? Most of these people are dead already. They got away with it. Well, we know they didn't really get away with it. But, pretty much, who are you going to pin the donkey on? There's really no one left around, is there? I mean, they'll probably pay out a few billion to the descendants of these people. But most of them are dead, so, who, I mean, it would have to be the parents of these people. And think about it, it happened over the course of several decades, maybe even a century. So what are they going to do? There's nobody to pay off. The, poor, the report also sheds a little light, little new light on the physical and, and abuse allegations generations of indigenous children endured at the school, which were open for more than 150 years. The report and accompanying news release acknowledged the harms to the indigenous children, but stopped short of offering an apology from the federal government. They won't even apologize. Wow. So, now people say, hey, no country's perfect. All countries have this, this kind of history. Well, it's all in how they handle it, right? 
And why did it even get to that point in the first place? Now, here's another story. This is crazy. Did you know that ICE is now one of the largest surveillance entities in America? And this goes beyond immigration. As the title says here, ICE's massive surveillance system has information on most Americans. Let's read this. Your information could end up in the hands of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. When you apply for a driver's license, drive on the roads, or sign up for utilities. Remember the thump-endorsed uh, Real ID? National Identification? Well, that's probably how you end up in the databases like this. Take a picture of you with that camera. That is, uh, you know... It's such, such high detail that they can actually use it to do facial recognition. Whereas before, when you went and got a picture, they didn't with the state, their state DMV, they didn't do that. There was no facial recognition because they didn't have facial recognition cameras. Well, ever since this national ID came out, they started using facial recognition cameras to take your picture that they can then run in the database and compare and do searches on you. When you go through a light or something. Facial recognition. Let's keep reading here. ICE has built a surveillance infrastructure that gives the agency access to data on most people living in the U.S. This is like the new NSA, you guys. And has gone well beyond its immigration enforcement duties. That's because we're all immigrants here. Right? We pretty much are. We don't have any control over who gets elected. We think we do, but we really don't. They're just managing us at this point. Managing the cattle. Duties to become a broader domestic surveillance agency. According to an investigation released by Georgetown Law Center. Surveillance through the Department of Homeland Security is much broader than people realize. It is truly a dragnet. Wow. Based on hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests. and review of ICE's spending transactions. The two-year investigation found that ICE possesses driver's license information of three out of four adults living in the U.S. Probably the people that signed up for Real ID. At least one-third of the adults' driver's licenses have been scanned by the agency with face recognition technology. See, so even if they don't get you with the Real ID, they'll scan your driver's license anyway. And then put it into the facial recognition system. Unbelievable. ICE can locate three and four adults through their utility records. Wow. Agency tracks the movements of cars in cities that are owned to nearly three to four adults. This is information as personal data. It's very concerning because this has been done without congressional oversight. It's all by design, you guys. And nothing slowed down when Thump was the president. These are the things you need to look at. These are the things. In fact, it increased under him. And it's continued with Bo Jivin, of course. But I'm tired of people saying, oh, he's against all that. No, he's not. Otherwise, this wouldn't be happening, right? Agency has collected information on millions of Americans and immigrants, largely without oversight by tapping private companies. This is why they haven't really cracked down on immigration. Because... We're all immigrants to these people. To the people in power, we're all immigrants. They want us all to have no rights. So, I'm not going to get any more into this article. I'll link all of this in the pinned comment for you guys. So you can dig deeper if you want. But this is crazy. Now, what else do we have here? Well, now if you haven't heard, there's been a baby food shortage. And what I think is behind this is more voodoo, of course. The baby food shortage is actually code for a baby shortage. Now, many of you have heard that one of the justices was caught talking and quoting in this leaked memo that there was a need for domestic supply of infants. Now, of course, it's been fact-checked and everything, and, you know, they said it was false because it was the wrong justice who said it, and he wasn't talking about 
that he was talking really about something else. But the fact remains is that the words that were used is that there was a need for domestic supply of infants for adoptions. That's just a weird way to phrase that, isn't it? So, there is in effect a baby shortage in America. Baby food shortage, baby shortage. Now, I think what they're really saying to us here is that they found a way to dramatically slow the birth rate. Look at this. You guys, babies are becoming a thing of the past. Look at the birth rate over the last dozens of years since 1960s. This is the fertility rate, actually. I think fertility and birth rate are a little bit different. Wow. If they can't beat America into submission, they'll s simply make us extinct, right? 1960s was the highest fertility rate. I think this is three and a half children per family. And then it went down from there. Now we're down to one if you're lucky. Maybe two. It literally was cut in half. This is the live births. Let's take a look at this. Since the 1800s. Look what's happened. Crude birth rate. From 1800 to 2020. It was up here at 50 before. And now it's down to like 12. It's been cut in two thirds. Had a small bump in the 60s. 50s and 60s. The 40s they did their mass sacrifice ritual. That was World War II. A lot of people died there. You'd think there would be more babies. But apparently not. And then here we are in 2020. And this Basically, we're going off of a cliff, you guys. We're going off of a cliff. Now, you've probably read the headlines and discovered that many large cities in America in 2020 have actually had negative growth. More people dying than being born. Now, they, they're trying to blame that on Vidco is what they're saying. They're blaming that on Vidco, but I don't know if that's the case, you guys. I simply don't believe that. Now, before we get into our final story, I'm going to check in with you guys one more time. Because we're going to read about how people felt about Smack the Nations in the early 1800s. Make sure you guys are with me, and we'll do a little Q&A after this. But look at this. Now, somebody sent this to me. And this is how people felt. The cow pock or the wonderful effects of the new Smack the Nations. Look at this cartoon here. They've got people with boils, breaking out in boils at like a soup kitchen. Animals, look at they got animals coming out of their faces. And these were the fears that people had back then. So this is nothing new. They want you to believe this is all new. Oh, these these anti smackers. What are they what are they thinking? They're crazy. Well, apparently this was a thing back then. People have always been distrustful of this kind of stuff. Let's read a little bit about what this image is talking about here. The eighteen oh this eighteen oh two cartoon by English caricaturist James Gilray is a striking reminder. That the controversy surrounding Smack the Nation is as old as the earliest days of the procedure itself. The print, the print, sorry, which was bequeathed to the Morgan Library and Museum in 1986 by the collector Gordon N. Ray, was issued only four years after English physician Edward Jenner privately published his landmark, an inquiry into the causes and effects of the variola smack scene. Jenner's, Jenner's modest booklet summarizes his success in imparting immunity to the deadly disease of smallpox by inoculating patients with cowpox relatively benign virus of cattle and other livestock 
The discovery would pave the way for the prevention of disease responsible for an estimated 400,000 deaths per year in Europe alone during the 18th century. Where the smallpox was endemic as it was in generous England, it was a perennial killer, particularly of children. Regions previously unexposed to the virus, such as Oceania, which is uh, Australia, and the Americas, it was the cause of historically catastrophic epidemics. Devastating human populations on a scale is difficult, if not impossible, to calculate to this day. By relying upon a similar but far less virulent infection associated with the animal host, generous smack scene had a key advantage over the previous and dangerous unpredictable practice of virilization or virilation. A technique which conferred immunity to the disease through inoculation with a mild strain of the smallpox virus. Jenner dignified cowpox in print with a name derived from the Latin Latinate term variola. Vaca. Cow. So the name Vaca Nation actually comes from a cow. Now you see the connection with the buffalo and the arrows. Buffalo is, of course, from like the cow family. This is how the word was developed. Vaca Nation. So, as Gil Ray's cartoon suggests, opposition to Jenner's smack scene was quick to emerge, with its bovine origins often provoking some of the most vehement criticism. Remember the polio smack scene? It was cultured in monkey brains. And we did the whole thing on Planet of the Apes because people actually got sick from the simian flu that was contaminating the polio smack scenes. To this day, they don't know how many people actually died from it, but they said 90 million people were affected by the contaminated polio smack scenes, according to the study that we saw. So the mixing of monkey and human is what this cartoon is suggesting here. In this case, it's cows, a mixing of cows with humans. And that's why they see us as cattle. This is one of the first smack scenes and was for cattle. And they injected people with cattle. A cattle virus, basically. Unbelievable. Now, look at the similarities to what's happening today. It says here, objections were made on both medical and religious grounds, condemning the smack of the nation as a dangerous and unsanitary procedure involving... The forbidden mingling of animal matter with human flesh. So here we get into Chimera and all these other things, don't we? Outspoken opponents such as the physician Benjamin, Benjamin Mosley sought to alarm readers with luridly worded arguments against the abominable practice of introducing a bestial humor into the human frame. You guys... Maybe this is what the Bible is talking about. Well, it, it's actually specific about bestiality. It's actually specific about laying down with an animal. But what, how is this really any different? You're mixing. It's the same thing. You're mixing with an animal. Kind of. I don't know. But, you know. Pretty crazy, right? So... This is a pretty long, not very long. There's a couple more paragraphs here, but I'm not going to read all that. I will link that as well in the pinned comment. Now let's go into the chat here. I appreciate everybody showing up on this Monday. And let's see what you guys are up to. If you have any comments, did I miss anything? Anything you want to add? Crazy times, you guys. Now we're going to be doing another Between the Headlines show tomorrow. I just didn't want to give you guys too much information today. It's a lot. And uh, so we'll get caught up on the rest of the headlines tomorrow. All right. Let's see what you guys are up to. Unreal. Yes, it is unreal. Okay. I'm just reading through your comments here, you guys. I took the, uh, what do you call it? You know, 
the time limit on the chat. I took it off because I think some people are getting irritated. It's just hard to see all your comments. And I know like you guys like to read the comments in the chat. And so slowing it down a little bit can help, especially when we get into these shows where we're approaching a thousand people watching. I just want to, I, I was trying to help you guys with that, but I think more people got irritated that they had to wait to, you know, enter another comment in the chat. I think I only had it on 10 or 15 seconds, but see, I can't even read your comments. They're going by too quick. So... Chimera of Human Tech, yes. Blessings to you, Shirley. Oh, the whole SNL skit with uh, Dap. Did you guys hear about that? Thanks, Tinfoil Brat. Henrietta Lacks, Casey, says Doll. Oh, you can slow your own chat down? I didn't know that. Days of Noah, intermingling. Yes. Tech built to spy and mind control and total control. Some of you guys like it on slow mode. Guy says he likes it on slow mode. South Park has two Vidco movies worth watching. Okay. 95% of Americans are sterile due to PFAS, says Jenny. Wow. Did I cover the Depp case much? Ask Overcomer. Uh, we had a few words on it over the past couple weeks. I think we probably spent a total of about 20 minutes talking about that trial. I don't want to get too much into it. I think it's more distraction. I think we did a show called Sympathy for the Devil or something like that. And that was kind of the, the angle we were talking about it at. The Terramar Project, Open Mind. Yes, that was the, the project that the um, Clintons were involved in and... And Griswold. Okay. Oregano oil is great for coughs and congestion. Says Rhonda. We're not even allowed to talk about stuff like that. You know, because they say it's medical misinfo. Isn't that crazy? Just natural stuff. Can't even talk about it anymore. Now, you guys, even these alternate sites are pulling down stuff. There's, they censor almost as much as YouTube does. At least on YouTube, you can kind of hide in the trees a little bit. you know. But on these other alternate sites, they're pulling stuff down left and right. I guess the, the whole Buffalo thing was live streamed on like Twitch or something. Live streamed it. But I don't think, it, I don't think that whole thing was real. You can tell. So... All right, you guys. I appreciate you guys coming out. We'll uh, get these links up for you. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, same exact time. Take care and be safe, you guys.